Welcome back everybody to another Motorbob Vlogs. Today we're on the launch of this beautiful bike, the Ducati Diavel V4. An incredible machine, as you'll see as we take in this spectacular mountain road out in Jebel Hafeet, which is near Abu Dhabi. It's basically Pike's Peak, but can it possibly be worth the £23,595 asking price? Well, we'll take it for a spin up and down the hill, or rather down and then back up the hill to find out. Sounds all right. Not super loud at the exhaust, but plenty coming from the airbox there. And what's interesting when you give it a rev in neutral when you're static is that you can feel the bike sitting down a bit. I assume that's the counter rotating crankshaft that you get in this V4 Gran Turismo engine. You can feel it just like hugs down a millimeter or two. Obviously hard to feel that when you're out on the road, but um, I'm sure it all counts towards, well, they say the agility and its ability to quickly change direction. The other thing that's super interesting about this engine is it gets their extended rear cylinder deactivation. So under 4,000 RPM, when you're not asking too much of the throttle, it'll actually run on the front two cylinders and that gives it a better fuel efficiency for a start, but also, it helps to keep your nuts nice and cool because that rear cylinder bank isn't getting too hot. And uh, you can hear a little difference when you're in a slow corner like this, for example, you might be just pretty neutral on the throttle. The sound is obviously more like a twin. And then as soon as you get on the gas, it uh, kicks back in and gives you the full power and torque delivery. And they were talking a little bit, oh, I'm running a bit wide. It's hard to talk and ride this road. It's pretty awesome and it twists all the way down. Uh, yeah, they talked about the way that they play with the uh, throttle valve. So they're slightly open on the rear bank there rather than fully shut. And that helps to avoid a um, Honda VTEC type situation where you get a noticeable surge. Uh, when the full force of it does kick in. Absolutely mad in terms of power, this bike. Nearly 170 horses peak. And it does have that full on V4 top end uh, that you might not have got from the 1260. That engine does feel a bit more meaty and torquey. This is more revvy and lively and honestly just faster. And that's despite the fact that it's the Gran Turismo version of this V4 engine. So the same as you'll find in the Multistrada V4. And they've done that to give it a bit more mid-range than the Panigale and Street Fighter, but also these longer service intervals. The Desmo uh, valve system is the thing that needs regular service in, but it does allow those engines to rev up a bit more freely, right up to 14, 15, 16 K RPM, if I remember correctly. Uh, but not necessary on a, an adventure bike or a cruiser style bike like this. And so they've gone with regular valves and it gets massive service intervals, something like 60,000 kilometers, um, which is more than most bikes. I think it's fair to say. The other big change from the 1260 rather Now the other big change on top of the V-twin making way for the V4 and somewhat related is the fact they've ditched the trellis frame and these V4 bikes like the Panigale and Street Fighter get the front frame design. So an aluminium monocoque bolted to the front of the engine and that holds on to the fork steerer and then a subframe and the swing arm mounting directly onto the back. So not only does that help with stiffness and rigidity but also uh, helps to keep weight down and they've shared uh, quite a lot of weight versus the 1260 and for a cruiser style bike i wouldn't say it's a thoroughbred cruiser but for something with a riding position that somewhat resembles a cruiser you have to say that is pretty competitive well it's <laughs> more than that i'd say it's the the lightest cruiser style bike uh, that I know of that makes this sort of uh, power output and so the result is something that just feels phenomenal on the road the acceleration is uh, insane for this kind of bike it corners way better than it looks like it ought to 
and on the brakes as well. I mean, that is helped by the fact that you've got big 330 mil discs, two 330 mil discs, and the Brembo Starlemma calipers. So super bike spec braking, and it all contributes to something that goes, stops, and turns incredibly well. I'm surprised ground clearance isn't more of an issue on this style of bike. Uh, but I'm not really, I'm not, you know, riding it like some of the ex racers here. Um, but even those guys haven't really been grumbling. So yeah, it's just a phenomenal package all round and it gets all of the, well, pretty much most of the electronics of the, yeah, Panigale, Street Fighter, that sort of thing. So wheelie control, launch control, lean sensitive stuff. And uh, yeah, riding modes, you've got touring and sport as the most aggressive, but there's a wet and urban, and there's phone connectivity and all that sort of stuff. But really, we haven't bothered with it. Just stick it in sport on this road and just enjoy the bike for what it is. Um, but I will say they don't seem particularly invasive. I haven't noticed like TC or traction control spoiling the fun much, but you've got to say it's a warm day on an incredible road. And so I wouldn't really expect much out of those. Maybe a bit more testing back in the UK when we can get a press bike. Uh, we'll reveal what it's like to get on with sort of day in, day out. Um, but Ducati's electronics are, you know, up there with the best of the best. So I would be very surprised if there's any issues there, especially because they've fine tuned it all for those existing bikes. Wait, I'm gonna let this guy pass because I'm just waffling on and it's hard to ride quick when you're talking. But look, as to whether this bike could be considered to be worth its price tag, which is steep, you know, that's a lot of money. It's gonna be way out of a lot of people's price range. Well, I don't know. Could you say that it's three or three and a half times as fun as something like a seven grand Honda Hornet on a road like this? I think you can probably have a good time on almost anything up here. And uh, there's a lot to be said for simple bikes, but for the sort of headline, super premium super cruiser performance muscle bike they really don't seem to have left any stone unturned in terms of building the most incredible bike that they can and that extends to the looks as well with that really distinctive tail light the quad exit exhaust the way that big fat 240 mil section rear wheel looks with the diamond cut design the tech is incredible the engine is the best engine they've got for this sort of bike, the GT version. The chassis is phenomenal. Now they've not said anything to this effect on this launch, but you never know, maybe they will come up with an S model that gets semi-active suspension from Olin's or something like that, just to take it up another notch. But with regards to what's on the market right now, this is just something special and it's so unique. There's no other bike like this really that just manages this effortless speed in so much comfort. It really is a lovely riding position, a big wide saddle, wide bars, a mid foot peg position that personally I prefer to something like the XD Avil. You wouldn't be able to hustle as much on that bike uh, coming up here and so yeah it just it's the complete package truly special and if you've got the money i can see exactly why you might decide to spunk it on a bike like this life is just too short for riding boring bikes if you've got the money you may as well make the most of it Woo! as always thank you so much for watching and it's the views and the money that comes from that that allows me to do incredible trips like this and bring you content about the best bikes on the best roads. And so I really appreciate all your support. Let me know how you're getting on down in the comments. Leave me some questions about the bike as well and tell me what you think about it. I'll try and get back to you. And if you're new here and you've just found this channel, uh, this is a bit more informal, just off the top of my head, riding the bike. Uh, so do subscribe and I'll see you in the next one, which will probably be on the Monster SP back in the UK. And then the street trip will launch in Spain after that. So there is some good stuff coming up, uh, but I think this one's gonna be hard to beat. Anyway, catch you soon. Peace.